Betty Ann Heggy with you. And she will be uh, connecting us with the, uh, the concepts of listening to our heart's desire. So Betty Ann Heggy began her spiritual quest 35 years ago while working as a senior VP at a global corporation. Now, she has since become a thought leader in gender dynamics, writing for Harvard Business Review and authoring the book, uh, Gender Physics. Unlock the energy you never knew you had to get the results you want. Now, Betty Ann has been named a distinguished speaker by the Canadian Mining Institute, given the Trailblazer Award from Women in Mining Canada, named one of the 100 Global Inspirational Women in Mining, and was inducted into the Hall of Fame of Canada, Canada's top 100 most powerful women. Today, Betty Ann will be speaking to us about finding peace in a balance of feminine and masculine energy. Thank you, Sean. Yes. Well, as you just heard, I used to be a corporate executive and I was the only woman working for many years with a lot of men. And it caused me to think a lot about the differences between the genders. And I noticed that there were men that I worked with that would speak in my, come in my office and speak about being parents with a lot of heart. And then I would see them a little while later in the boardroom with all the other men and they'd be pounding the table and saying, you know, we're gonna snuff out the competition. And so it really made me realize how much of our, is really an act that we put on, that we're performance that we perform. And I started paying attention to the attributes that we expect to be masculine and those that we expect to be feminine. We expect men to be strong and independent and self-sufficient and bottom line oriented and take risks and have a be stoic, have a stiff upper lip. Meanwhile, we expect women to be consensual, collaborative, be good listeners, um, to um, care about others, to be nurturing, to be empathetic. And it made me realize that it really puts all of us in a box. And there's all these attributes that we should all be using all the time. And that we put ourselves in a box and we don't make them available to us. And it starts from the time that we're born. We have a subconscious in, it starts being programmed by age three months. And what we see is that children, parents, research shows parents hold children. And if they're holding a little girl, they will say, oh, look how cuddly she is. And if they're holding a little boy, they'll say, look how active he is. And yet the outside observers don't see any difference whatsoever between those little boys and those little girls' behaviors. It's the, what the parents are imbuing with those children. And the children grow up and they go to school and the teachers spend more time encouraging little boys to debate issues and delve more quickly, deeply into things. And they, the research shows that they reward little girls for uh, being quiet and listening. And then of course we have the media where Many of the Western uh, TV shows are mostly about males and the women, and, and even for the little children watching things like the Muppets, there, there is, you know, Bert and Ernie and Cookie Monster, they're all males and they have, you know, Miss Piggy, the only female and she's bossy and vain. So we have all these ideas about the way that we program men and women to be a certain way and I came to the conclusion after watching executives who were successful in their jobs, that they used the attributes of what we call masculine energy and feminine energy. And they're more balanced and they're more attractive to us. We are, they have a, a gift of presence where we are naturally attracted to them and we wanna help them reach their goals. We wanna spend time around them. They have the ability to form a relationship with you as well as get results. They are good listeners as well as good speakers. They are, allow things to come to them. They don't have to just rush in and take action. They use the attributes of what we typically think of as, as the Tao actually decide, you know, taught 20, in the year 2600 BC about um, yin and yang, that they're independent or they're interdependent complementary energies and that we, 
nature uses all of them and we're all better off if we're using all of them. So that made me realize that as a woman, I was far better off in some circumstances to use some of the attributes of the masculine, but I had to make sure that I balanced that off by using all the attributes of the feminine as well. And I observed men that I worked with that were much more successful by using attributes of the masculine as well as attributes of the feminine. And I became a big proponent of all of us becoming the individuals that we were meant to be as what Felicia just described as our gift that we bring to the world. If we're, our gift that we bring to the world is not aligned with our natural gender energy, then we sometimes put ourselves in a box and don't allow it to come forward. And I really want everybody in the world to feel that they can be who they're meant to be. And one of the problems that I realized comes with this is that in our society, in the Western world, ever since the Industrial Revolution, we have tended to say that productivity or the getting of things done, the very masculine way of life is where it's at. And that then started, people started believing that there was something less successful or appealing about the feminine. And so many of us, myself included, were people that used lots of masculine energy because we felt as, little, as a little girl, I realized very young that I got rewarded for being a tomboy. And I remember my father owned a hotel and when the people would come to check into this little hotel that we owned, I would be behind the desk helping my father, getting the room keys that I knew he wanted, getting the cash box out. And I remember once one of the guests saying to my father, you know, that daughter of yours, she, you could put her out in the alley and she could fend for herself. I just wish my son had half that gumption. And I realized that my father really, that made him proud. And I realized at a young age that it was obviously to my advantage to be more self-sufficient and independent. And it was to my, it was, a, it was a, a compliment to be treated like I was a boy. And yet I had a little brother and I used to dress up him and his friends in my clothes and have a fashion show. And not only were the little boys ridiculed, but one of the little boys went home and his father punished him because he, they didn't want, you know, it's always been, for boys, it's like the furthest away you are from being feminine, the more masculine you are and the better off you are. So I realized that it really was not, we, we, we tell boys that when we wanna humiliate them, we say you're crying like a girl, or if we wanna insult somebody, we say you're driving like an old lady. And that's, we have to get away from thinking that the feminine is less desirable because really, it is the basis of all of good decision-making and in truly finding balance and peace because all decisions really need to start with the feminine. So we all not only are different versions, we need to think of ourselves as humans, which is different versions of the same as opposed to being polarized masculine or feminine. And we need to think of them as complementary interdependent energies. And we want to start with the feminine. So. When we have a decision to make, we wanna be able to go inside and think about who are we? What do we want? What is it, can we allow things to come to us? Because that's when we can then take action and when we can do it successfully. So I always think about needing to start with the feminine. I had situations in my work so often where I would always be, let me go back to find out what would my feminine say? I remember once being in Paris having had a very full day with my boss and um, we went for dinner in a very nice and very snooty French restaurant and he said something that I thought was funny and I have a big loud laugh and I laughed really loudly and everybody in this restaurant kind of just turned around and looked at me and I said to my boss did I embarrass you and he said well you know your laugh is pretty loud and, uh, you know, this was early in my career. I didn't have a lot of confidence yet that I was really accepted. And I was the only woman with all these guys that were not only male, but older than I was. And I remember going back to my room that night and, and kind of tossing and turning and thinking, you know, do I need to tone down my laugh? Should I quit laughing? And I decided to go inside and feel my feminine and see what my mother would teach me, my internal divine feminine woman. 
And she said, this you lo time, laughter is time spent with the gods and you need to be able to laugh. It's a signature it's, who, signature, it's who you are. If you have to give up being who you are, it's not the right place to be. And it gave me confidence to kind of go away and say, this is who I'm going to be from now on. And I remember after that taking maternity leave and having one of the guys that I worked with after I came back coming by my office and saying, we're so glad to have you back because we missed your laughter in the halls. You laugh so loud, it travels down the hall and we want it, we need it. So I always say, start with the feminine, make sure you allow that feminine to come through. And the way that you do that is really by finding love because when it boils right down to it, although there are all these attributes of masculine and all these attributes of feminine, masculine energy is really about having courage and feminine energy is really about caring. And caring is really about love. It's about being concerned about others. It's about making a connection with others. It's about not separating yourself, but feeling empathy, finding common ground. And I'm not talking about the love that is about feelings that you're in romantic love or that you have to like everybody. It's really love is about being concerned for the spiritual development of everyone around you. And that means that we need to find time always to be in love by forgiving. So I find that if I can be in my feminine every day and have my actions flow from my feminine, that that is how I am empowered as a woman. And I really think that that is how men are as empowered as, woman, as, as men as well, is by taking the action, but having it flow from the internal part of them, which is really the feminine. And of course, that means all of us have to get over the idea that the feminine is weaker or somehow not doesn't measure up, especially the men in our world, because when we are out of balance, not only do we not have peace and we don't have that presence and charisma, but we also get out of when we're out of balance, we get to be too much in an energy. And when you're too much in the energy of being an individual, that's when you start becoming overly dominant. And that's where we have authoritarian leaders. So I really do feel that the, we need to empower ourselves as women because we can access this feminine more readily because we've been socialized into it. And once we can access that feminine, we can bring it forward into the world and we can help others see it and share it because that's love. And to have love, we have to let go of fear. And fear is what the world teaches us. And to let go of fear, we need to have courage. And that means we're using both the masculine and the feminine. And that's where we find the, the balance. And that's where there's peace. It's really just different versions of the same. I compare it to running water from a tap. If you want to quench your thirst, you turn on the cold water, have a glass of water. If you want to run a bath, you turn on the hot water. You might turn on the cold as well to make sure you get the right temperature. But whether it's coming out of the tap is hot or cold, it's still water. And that's us. It's all just different versions of the same. And it means that we look at the world as if we're all humans and we're not different 